This is chapter 14, Print, Early Knowledge, and Emerging Interest. This is when kids start to write things down and understand that print serves a purpose, that the marks you make on a paper com can communicate something to someone else. All right, let's go through this stuff. So um, some of the highlights in this chapter observable stages in preschool writing. At age three, it's about the process of making the marks. It's not about those marks meaning anything, and it's not about intentionality in those marks. It's, it's um, so I tell this story every time I teach this class. When my daughter was about two, almost three, she would take a pen and just scribble, scribble, scribble on a page. And we would ask her, what are you, what are you drawing? What are you writing? And she would say fasties, because for her, it was not about what was going to show up on the page and what that was going to communicate. For her, it was about the process of doing fasties, right? She, she didn't care about what what the finished product was or what that meant to anyone. She cared about making the motion, right? And making the marks on the page, no meaning involved. Um, as she got a little bit older, she also did slow ease, right? So the intention at the youngest stages in preschool is not to write something or draw something. It's the process of learning how to hold that pencil, how to make those marks on the page, how to make the marks look different, all right? You get a little bit older, there's a little bit more intentionality. Now I'm trying to draw a straight line. Now I'm making letters or um, shapes that look like letters, right? So um, don't expect when you ask a three-year-old what they're writing or what they're drawing for them to be able to tell you because they're, they're not thinking about it that way. Um, at age four, four and a half, you get separate symbols. So they've started to realize that letters are separate entities and they write like they see other people writing, right? So it's very important when you are working with three and four year olds to write, to show them what writing looks like, right? So you should be writing down lists and you should be writing down notes so that the children see you in this activity, because that's part of the way that they're going to develop those skills. Um, a lot of four-year-olds can write their full name if they have a short name. Um, most four-year-olds certainly can write um, the first letter of their name, and that's an important letter. Um, sometimes as children are developing their writing skills, writing their names, they write it backwards, and that's a developmental stage. Like, that's okay. They're figuring it all out. They may invent letters, right? By age five, they should be able to write their full name um, and a few other words. So in our preschool, in my preschool, when you were in the four-year-old class, one of the first things you did when you came into the class every day was sign in. And the way that worked was at the beginning of the year, you might have a um, page where you were just tracing the letters, right? And then it might be... Um, those dashed letters. And then it might be that you have a card that has the word and then you write it based on watching that card. And then by the end, or you know, looking at the card, by the end of the year, you would be writing it independently. So it was a continuum and some kids, you know, zipped right through that. And some kids, it took them the entire year and they may not even have been able to do it at the end of the year. Um, you know, and that's just how kids work different developmentally. But it was a process and it was um, something to work toward through the year. Because when, when they get to kindergarten, we want them to be able to write their names. Um, okay. So what we want to learn in this chapter is small muscle development, because that's what you're using, those small muscles, sequence of skills for written language, um, settings that promote development of print, and then print awareness activities. So um, print is different from other visual symbols, right? Because it's about language and it's about communicating ideas and words. 
Um, it holds information. These are things that children don't understand until they get to be three and four years old. And it, it's an interesting um, breakthrough when they get to figure that out. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you have um, children who are learning to read, to write, whatever, like I've said many times, it's a continuum. Um, a two-year-old who knows um, how to turn the pages in a book and knows that it tells a story is a reader, right? Um, a four-year-old who can write the first letter of his name is a writer. It's all sort of moving them along the continuum to be actual readers and writers. Um, and so one of the things that um, reading aloud teaches children is how books work, how words go left to right on a page, that you come back around, right? And that you your pages start with page one. This is stuff that they learn when you're holding up a book in group time. And especially when you're holding up a book in group time and you are, oh, let's see. You're showing them, you know, you're going, and on that granny, there is a child, a dreaming child, on a snoring granny, on a cozy bed, in a napping house, where everyone is sleeping, right? And it's also helpful to do that it, um, to really show kids how it works by using a big book, right? So this really helps them understand. There is a house, right? So you know, those are individual words. So when you're reading aloud, you're teaching them all this stuff too, okay? Um, difference between a letter, a word, and a sentence, spaces between words, special marks, punctuation, upper and lowercase letters. This is all stuff that when you're reading aloud, they're keying into and catching on with. Um, as you know, it's all connected, reading, writing, listening, speaking, and viewing. We, they're all moving toward the same goal. Um, okay, so phonological awareness is the distinct sounds of speech, right? Those little tiny k act, right? Um, I'm sorry, that's phonemic awareness. And um, yeah, <laughs> phonemes are the little tiny pieces of speech. Phonological awareness is um, understanding speech and its meaning, right? Okay. It's a really technical difference there. Um, okay, so instructional approaches. There are a lot of different ways to teach children to read and to write. And here's the thing. Every child learns to read and write a little bit differently. And so we need to be able to offer a variety of approaches to help children learn to read and write. Okay, so the traditional approach is making a print um, environment with a lot of print, giving them books, giving them um, uh, writing utensils and limited instruction in letter formation. You're not doing, you know, no, we make this, you know, you're sort of just letting them work it out on their own. That's the traditional approach. The readiness approach is providing reading materials and models, naming and tracing letters, having a language arts center, reading picture books. So this is talking about, we need to do all of these things to get you ready. And then you're gonna, we're gonna work on really specifically, um, work on writing um, and naming and tracing letters, really intentional, right? And then the natural approach is just talking about, you know, things that we see print in daily life, giving alphabet toys, making connections between reading, writing, and speaking, doing picture books. 
you're going to need to be able to do all of these things with all kids, right? Because every kid grasps it a little bit differently. Every kid um, emphasizes a different way of doing it. And so you need to be able to do all of them. Um, developmental levels of writing. We kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, your book goes into more detail on this, and I think that's important. But for our purposes, for dealing with preschoolers and really young grade schoolers, um, working individually with each child and figuring out the best way to work with him or her is really going to be the most successful plan. Okay. So um, this is just different levels of understanding how print works, right? One of the hardest things is to help children understand um, letters, make words, make sentences, make books. So helping them understand how all that fits together, it's something. <laughs> So um, we've talked about this, like first we have scribbles, then we have scribbles that are a little bit more like um, letters, and then we start having closed shapes, and then those shapes are forming uh, lines of text, and then you have letters, and then you have recognizable alphabet letters. Um, alphabet groupings with spaces, helping them understand there's a space between words. Invented spelling. Invented spelling is a really interesting thing. Um, I may make a little video about invented spelling for you because um, children have to go through a, a stage where they are making up their own understandings of how words are spelled in order to get to where they can actually spell the words. Um, but it's, again, it's all on a continuum. Um, the stages of invented spelling, spelling awareness, primitive spelling, pre-phonetic spelling, phonetic spelling, and correct spelling. There are, I have a lot of um, examples of invented spelling, which I will share with you. I'm not gonna do it right here, but I'll make a separate little video. Okay. What about the ABCs? So letter of the week, is it appropriate? Is it useful? Um, I would say not necessarily. So here's why. When we do letter of the week, that's 26 weeks of learning one letter each week. That doesn't really mirror the way that we learn um, the alphabet and the way words work in real life. We don't spend a week on each word or whatever. It isolates letters in a way that doesn't really make sense as you use them in real life. So um, it's traditional. It's a way to teach kids letters, but it's not necessarily the most developmentally appropriate way to do it. So if you were going to do it the most developmentally appropriate way, you might start with um, letters that occur most frequently, right? What are the letters that kids are going to encounter most? Because as you go through 20 A to Z, you know, some of those letters are very frequent letters, but they are later on in the alphabet, like S, for instance, or R. Those are way late in the alphabet. Um, there's a lot of studies about how to teach kids letters the most appropriate way. Um, we know that when children learn the ABCD song, they don't know when you, when children initially learn that song, they don't know that you're talking about individual letters, right? They're hearing ABCD, like that's a word, ABCD, EFG, or LMNOP, right? They don't understand I'm talking about individual letters that are part of the alphabet. Um, but it is, you know, you should teach it to them because eventually their learning will catch up to the concepts, right? Um, what you need to do is make sure that 
if you're teaching the alphabet, you're keeping it based in meaning. You're not just saying A, 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 A. You're talking about A is a letter in apple. It starts the word apple. And you're talking about how it fits into the world. Um, using environmental print, signs, posters, things that they see in the real world that include those letters, a variety of materials and print rich environment, books, letters, um, magnet letters, uh, puzzle letters, all kinds of things so that they can touch and play. Um, That's super distracting, isn't it? When I just walk away like that. Um, these are from the dollar store. You should have these in your classroom. You can just put them in a bag. They don't have to stay in this thing so that kids can touch and play with letters. Um, magnet letters on the refrigerator, all that stuff. Anytime they can have an experience with things, they're going to learn more. Prerequisites for handwriting, small muscle coordination and eye-hand coordination. This is a lot of times when we're writing, we realize that kids might have an eye-hand coordination issue that needs to be worked on. Ability to hold writing tools, form basic strokes, letter perception, desire to write and communicate. Some children do not de develop a desire to write and communicate until they're four or older. So if they don't see the point in it, don't try to force it, help them understand why we're doing it. But, you know, I had a kid who, um, he was a huge athletic kid, four-year-old. He had no time in his day to write his name. And that was okay. He's in maybe fifth or sixth grade now, maybe older than that. I don't know. Um, he can write his name. It's okay. Um, some children just aren't interested in it and you need to help them understand that it's important and they'll get to it. And understanding of left to right. They don't need to understand this is my left and this is my right necessarily. They need to understand that it goes this way. Okay. Um, you should have print materials all over your classroom for play settings. You should have um, baskets with writing supplies all over your classroom, even for little people, right? Um, in a toddler classroom, we had a paper, just a piece of paper, big paper, taped to the wall and some crayons where they could go write on that, right? Because this is writing for a toddler. They are writers. So things like um, note cards, fun notebooks, um, fun uh, writing utensils, just keep a basket of that in your block area, in your housekeeping area, so that they can use that for writing down plans for building, writing a note that says don't touch this, writing um, a grocery list or whatever. Um, in our classroom, when I had threes, we had a writing basket that had note cards and envelopes and we taught them how to send letters to their parents. So they would, you know, I had all of these um, envelopes and little pieces of paper. And after a while, I printed their um, names and addresses on labels. And they could figure out which name and address was theirs. And then they would, you know, scribble down something on a piece of paper, stick it in an envelope, and I would mail it to their house. I had to let the parents know if you're getting weird pieces of, you know, random scribbling, it's because we're doing it in school. But they thought that was the coolest thing, that they could write something, <coughs> excuse me, in the classroom and it would show up at their house. It was amazing. <coughs> Talk to your parents about what you're doing in your classroom, always, but help them understand that one of the things that we're doing is learning how to write and explain to them that um, sometimes <laughs> kids don't do it in the right order or it looks weird. Help them, help the parents understand how important it is to work through um, printing and learning about letters, talking about letters at home. <laughs> 